Welcome to Real Physics. Today I will talk about that the sun is not a gas. Use your brain. I know this is a provocative message, but I'm the one who did not use properly his brain. For decades, I not only I was convinced that the sun was a gas, I even taught it. I said, the sun is a gas, it's made of hydrogen and so on and so forth, until eventually the scales fell from my eyes when I listened to this talk by Pierre-Marie Rabitaille, to whom goes all the credit for this discovery. He is an eminent scientist who held the world record in medical imaging before dealing with this problem. And his key message is the solar spectrum cannot be produced by a gas. So let's unpack that a little bit. I think it's a good idea if we understand in the first place how atoms do emit light. And the guys to mention here are Anders Angstrom, who very precisely measured the lines you see here on the hydrogen atoms in a discharge tube. And Johann Jakob Balmer in 1885 ingeniously developed a mathematical formula that described these spectral lines. And only with this, Niels Bohr, 30 years later, was able to develop his model of the atom. And essentially it says that there is a nucleus and you have discrete electron orbits and light is emitted when an electron jumps from a higher orbit, say from the third shell to a second or even the first shell. And interestingly, this is due to this mysterious constant of nature, Planck's quantum of action, that determines the angular momentum of the electron. And I don't seem to understand all this. There's a lot of uh, wave mechanics and quantum mechanics and riddles. But at the end of the day, atoms emit in discrete lines. There is no way they can produce such a continuous spectrum. And I know that I will be accused of oversimplifying here. But so let's unpack that a little bit. Of course, you have pressure broadening. That means if you have colliding atoms, that will spoil a little bit the accuracy. And then you have temperature broadening. If the atoms move at a certain velocity, then you have Doppler shifts. And this very sharp line then becomes a little bit wider. But no way that at the given temperatures you can arrive at a spectrum that is continuous as it is observed in the sun. And then, of course, you have molecules, not atoms, in the solar atmosphere. And that adds vibrational and uh, rotational degrees of freedom. And you get several more lines, but it's still not continuous. And it's true that the greater, the bigger the molecule becomes, the more continuous the spectrum. But the molecule, the hydrogen molecule, is still a very simple thing. So, then there are people saying, oh, you don't understand that this is a plasma. That's sometimes I read this in the comments. Oh, the sun is a plasma, the sun is a plasma. No, look at this. I mean, you have 6,000 kelvins at the surface of the sun and the energy, the thermal energy needed to strip away the electron would correspond to 157,000 kelvin. So, in other words, if you look at the Boltzmann distributions, only one atom in one trillion would produce a continuous spectrum and you're telling me that one in one trillion is responsible for the sunlight we observe? Give me a break. Now the key message here is that an atom is such a simple thing, it just cannot produce arbitrary wavelength because it has discrete orbits and discrete jumps. Everything is discrete here and you need arbitrary extensions and arbitrary antennas to produce such a continuous spectrum. It's just not possible. And then, of course, you can invent all sorts of magic and all sorts of excuses to somehow arrive at this continuous spectrum, but think straight, okay? And believe what you see. Look at this spectrum and this is the form we observe. Wouldn't it be a good idea to look at the physics that is responsible for such a continuous spectrum? And now we have to go back to history. And that's the time when Edison invented the light bulb. Of course, there was huge interest and in a lot of research in how, how uh, macroscopic bodies emit light. And 
Well, it's just temperature. Why do they emit light? Because they're hot. And if they're hot, there is a lot of motion and a lot of acceleration of the charges and accelerated charges emit electromagnetic waves. That is light. That's the mechanism. And Planck, Max Planck in 1900, ingeniously found a formula that precisely described such a spectrum. And it turns out that, uh, this is a theoretical argument, there are not that many materials who actually can produce such a continuous spectrum because, as I said, you need all sorts of wavelengths, arbitrarily length, and if you have a, a macroscopic body, of course, this is possible, there is no restriction. And, but in practice, there are only a few materials, such as soot and graphite, that actually can emit such a spectrum. And spoiler alert, yes, also hydrogen can form such a lattice, but we will talk about this in another video, about the liquid metallic hydrogen model. Well, but look at the key message. Um, you have Planck's law, you understand very well that the solar spectrum coincides beautifully with this form and such a Planck spectrum can never be generated by a gas by single atoms or molecules. Why? Because how do we know it's 6000 degrees? It's Planck's law that tells us it's 6000 degrees. But it also tells us that's condensed matter because a gas can never produce such a continuous spectrum. And now uh, to boil this down to a very simple message. You have the light of a light tube and it's discrete and you have the light of a light bulb and it's continuous. And one thing is a gas, a light tube is filled with gas and inside the light bulb there is a metal, there is tungsten. And guess what? What's the spectrum which is more similar to the sun? It's clear that the sun must be condensed matter. And now I know the experts will come along and say, no, 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 there is a Rossland mean opacities and there is the H minus atom. But I think modern physics has lost the ability to think in common sense terms. You need to start from common sense. And I'm not saying everything is simple. Things can become more complicated. But if you start from the wrong model, you end up with this mess of theoretical models that in a epicycle manner become always more and more complicated. And of course there are all sorts of interesting aspects around this model and I invite you to go to the papers of Pierre-Marie Rabitai, very detailed, very good, very well worked out. And I tried to tell the story in a very straightforward manner in my book The Liquid Sun and it's also available in German and in French. And yeah, you should also go to Robbie Tai's uh, YouTube channel, Sky Scholar. A lot of very interesting, very detailed videos. Robbie Tai is a scholar who really wants to understand things. And that, in a broader sense, is related to my discussion of scientific culture, understanding versus describing. This is my book, Make Physics Great Again. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.